A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes I think uh, Thomas really gets a bad rap. You know, he's always stuck with the title, Doubting Thomas. Okay, <laughs> he did doubt. Uh, but I think he was one of the greatest gifts of the apostles to us, one of the greatest gifts to us. Because who among us hasn't had a doubt from time to time in their lives? God, where are you? God, how could you let this happen? Whatever it might be, are you real? Where are you? I think that's happened to all of us from time to time, as it happened to Thomas. So we get kind of an example of how to handle it with Thomas. So Thomas says, you saw him? Well, I need more information. It's basically what he's saying. I need more information to believe that. A week later, he gets more information. There's Jesus in front of him. Now he could have thought, okay, uh, Jesus, uh, maybe he didn't die, here he is. Or maybe, uh, you know, he just did rise from the dead, but he's Jesus. But that's not where that, what happened to him. He said, my Lord and my God. He is the first one in John's gospel to call Jesus God. He needed more information, he got it, 
and his faith deepened more than probably all the others at that point because he asked for the information and he got it, he absorbed it quickly, and he believed in a deeper, deeper way. I remember being in the seminary, my first year in the seminary, you know, you're studying all kinds of things that really some of them you've never heard before put this way, and it could really throw you off sometimes. Well, this one particular day I remember thinking, what if that isn't the body and blood of Christ? What if it's just bread and wine? And that thought kind of really upset me. <laughs> How could I become a priest and not believe in that? I believed it all my life. And at this moment, though, for some reason, this thought came to me. And I wish I thought of Thomas at that time, because Thomas didn't panic. He just said, I want more information. But I kind of panicked. And there was a knock at my door of my room, and a good friend came in, and I told him what I was thinking. And he said, um, you got to get more information. You got to do some more studying. Go to the library. We didn't have the Google machine at the time. Go, go to the library and do some reading. Well, a whole week later, I, did, I immersed myself in reading all kinds of theologians on the Eucharist, including Protestants, everybody I could get my hands on. And by the end of that week, with all that information, my belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist deepened more than it I've ever had before in my life. And I had it all my life, but it deepened even more. I got the information, I absorbed the information, and it led to a deeper, deeper faith. Thomas showed us what to do. So we honor him today. So my sisters and brothers, if that moment comes for you in some form, some way, where are you? Do you are you real? Do some reading. We do have a Google machine now. You know, do some reading. Do a lot of reading. Get more interested in it. And I will tell you, your faith will deepen in a far greater way than the faith you had before. So don't panic. Don't run away. Get the information. And through the Holy Spirit, you will be enlightened.